James Taylor and Samit Patel star to send Nottinghamshire through to the semi-finals of the Royal London One Day Cup as they comfortably defeated Derbyshire by 85 runs in the first of this week's quarter-finals at Trent Bridge. Taylor started the day by winning the toss and deciding to bat first under cloudy skies and on a used pitch. And Michael Lund was soon off and running, taking three fours off three balls in Mark Footage second over. Lum looked in great touch but was out in the unluckiest of ways as Ben Cotton got a slight touch on Stephen Mullaney's straight drive to be run out for 19. Two balls later, Mullaney edged Cotton to Wayne Madsen to leave Knotts on 31 for two after four overs. By the end of the 10 overs of power play, that total had moved on to 50 for two with Taylor and Patel leading the recovery. They actually did much more than that, bringing up a steady 50-run partnership in 85 balls with both batting watchfully as well as easing the pressure with shots like these. Taylor eased into the 40s as the 100 was posted off the first ball of the 23rd over. At the halfway stage, the total read 118 for two. And next ball, Taylor struck the first six of the match to get to his half century of 75 balls. An innings including that maximum and four fours. The 100 partnership came up of 138 deliveries. Patel then brought up his own 50 off 65 balls, from which he'd found the boundary on four occasions. These two had now laid an ideal platform for the rest on what looked to be a slow and very dry surface. The stand ended on 136 from 30 overs as Patel was out for 55. Ricky Vessels added yet more impetus to the innings from the moment he arrived at the crease. He and Taylor, who continued to work the ball around really well, brought the 200 in over number 39. But then Vessels on 28 gave David Wainwright a wicket in his final over, the batsman waiting an age before toe-ending to Scott Elston at mid-wicket. So James Franklin strode in with a score on 215 for four with nine and a half overs remaining. And he soon watched Taylor get to his second hundred of the competition. This one off a patient but very well judged 134 balls with seven fours and one six included. With a total on 244 for four with five overs to go, the hit was now on. Franklin literally threw the bat here, yet he still found the boundary. He was then run out for a run of all 27, but only after adding 87 runs in nine overs with Taylor, a partnership which had really turned this game the outlaw's way. Enter Chris Reed, who pummeled his first ball for six to make 11 off three, to see his side to a final score of 313 for five. Taylor ended with a magnificent 146 of 154 balls. To leave the Falcons to make their highest ever total batting second to win a one-day match. It would also have to be the highest ever run chase at Trent Bridge in the one-day game, and so Derbyshire needed a quick start. Instead, Wes Durston drove Jake Ball's sixth delivery to Mullaney in the covers. Godelman was looking in a confident mood, however, helping to take the score to 46 for one at the end of the first 10 overs of power play. But on 25, he played a slower ball from Ajmal Shazad back onto his stumps. After 20 overs, there was nothing to choose, though, between these two teams with Marcus North and Madsen beginning to play the Taylor and Patel roles from earlier on. Their partnership then was now crucial. But it was ended at 33 as Shazad struck for a second time. Another slower ball being driven by Madsen to Sam Wood at extra cover. The Derbyshire skipper on his way for 14. The 100 was up in over number 24. And then North reached his half century off 67 balls with six fours included. The pressure was now on the experienced Australian to keep going. For his side to win, he needed to bat on and on. He also needed support, and that wasn't forthcoming from Alex Hughes, who was bowled by Patel for five. 106 for four just past the halfway stage of the Falcons in trouble. With Mullaney and Patel squeezing skillfully, the boundaries dried up, and the latter then produced a stunner to have Scott Elston brilliantly held by Reed. Elston was gone for 10 at 130 for five, and there appeared to be only one winner now, with the run rate required up to 10 per over with 18 to go. The batting power play was now vital and Gareth Cross used it well with his six. But a couple of balls later, Patel struck for a third time, claiming the big wicket of North, who was stumped for 67. 143 for six in the 34th over became 162 for seven in the 36th, 
Taylor taking a fine catch over his shoulder at extra cover as Patel celebrated once again as Cross departed for 23. Shazad then picked up his third wicket by bowling Tony Palladino with another superb slower delivery in the next over for eight and it was now just a matter of time for the home side to earn their place in the last four. Cotton did ruin Patel's excellent figures a bit by hitting him for this maximum, the bowler ending with four for 49 from his ten overs. The Falcons were nine down when arguably the best death bowler in the country, Luke Fletcher, did what he does best by hitting Cotton's stumps. The last pair of Wainwright and Footit added 25 runs, but then Fletcher yorked Wainwright for a one-day best 31 ball 41 to send the Outlaws through to the semi-finals next week. They will find out their opponents on Friday night. The margin of victory was by 85 runs as Derbyshire were unable to produce what would have been a shock. So it's Nottinghamshire who stay on the road to Lords. They are now only one game away from a second one-day final in two years.